Welcome to this week's edition of Mountain Outhouse News. I'm your host, Jam Jam. This is the craziest shit that happened in running this week. This week's stories include Zach's 100 mile world record, a new Pikes Peak marathon record, and Mexico City marathon debacle. He's finally done it. Zach Bitter, who has been on a lifelong mission to break the long standing 100 mile world record of an 11 hours 28 minutes, took to an indoor track in Wisconsin to better that time. Zach has been the most promising athlete of this generation to really focus on going as fast as possible at 100 miles. He already had the American record and four runs at 12.08 or faster, with each one having some sort of issue showing he was likely capable of breaking the record. All the stars aligned with his latest training block and the venue. Being indoors on a flat track certainly seemed to have helped as well. He ran an extremely consistent race, splitting five hours, 40 minutes for the first 50 miles, and then negative splitting the second 50 miles in 538 for an overall time of 11 hours, 19 minutes, 13 seconds. That's about nine minute improvement off the previous best time. If you're trying to do math on his minute per mile pace, let me assist. It's 648 per mile. After watching Zach for many years at Desert Solstice, setting multiple American and even the 12 hour world record, it made me so proud to see Zach finally accomplish his goal. For the cherry on top, he went on to also reset his own 12 hour world record. The Pikes Peak Marathon and Ascent took place this weekend, and I was there in person helping to cover the event for the Golden Trail World Series and Solomon. I had a blast seeing so many of you out there. Definitely a highlight of the weekend. As for the race itself, it drew a quite competitive and global field thanks to the Golden Trail World Series. Pikes Peak is a two-day event with the ascent taking place Saturday. It's a pure climb from Manitou Springs to the top of Pikes Peak. Well, pretty close anyways. The finish line is just below the summit at over 14,000 feet. The marathon follows the next day on the same course as the ascent, but then turning around and descending back to town. It was Kim Dobson, current Ascent record holder, who came away with her seventh victory. Her best time stands at 2.24, and she ran 2.41 this year. For the men, Joe Gray took home his third win, running a 2.09. Fastest ascent ever? That goes to Matt Carpenter, who set that during the 1993 Pikes Peak Marathon at 2.01, when he went on to set the marathon record that still stands at 3.16. Next, there was a lot of speculation that Killian might break Carpenter's record, leading into the race. Well, it was not to be, and from my experience on course, many of the runners, especially locals, were totally okay with that. Seems to be a lot of Matt Carpenter fans out there. Killian split 209 at the summit and won in 327, one of the faster times on the course, and his best time in two wins. Sage Canada had a great race coming in second place 11 minutes back at Killian. Mark Lowenstein was third, two minutes behind Sage. For the women, it was a different tale. After Megan Kimmel broke the long-standing course record last year by mere seconds, it was pretty wild to see Maude Mathis absolutely destroy this course in what I heard was her longest distance race to date. Not bad for a first-time marathoner, eh? She ran 2.29 to the top, just five minutes off Kim's best ever ascent time. Her overall winning time was 4.02, cementing her as one of the top short distance mountain runners in the sport right now. Second place went to Yingville Kasperson, who was 24 minutes back and Meg McKinsey rounded out the podium five minutes behind her. I took on the incline in my way up, filming for the race this weekend. If you don't know what I'm talking about, be sure to check out the latest Solomon TV video episode called Inclined, which provides an awesome look at the history of that brutal climb. We do have an update from Greg Cummings, who's going after the coveted annual incline record for number of summits, which is currently held by Roger Austin with 1,719 times. Greg just hit number 1,200 on day 228 and is well on his way. The Telluride Mountain Run went down in Colorado this weekend as well. The steep and technical course covers 60 kilometers of San Juan goodness. Michael Versteeg took the win here in 757, over 30 minutes ahead of second place Daniel Kraft and third Dave Chu. On the ladies' side, Wiley Hall was your women's champ in 10 hours, 16 minutes, followed by Maggie Guterl, 30 minutes back, and Jenny Nakai shortly thereafter. Over in California, the Castle Peak 100K took place near Donner Pass, 
Jorge Maravilla was your winner in 12 hours flat on a brutally tough course. Britta Clark was the women's champ just about an hour back of Jorge, 13.02, and 7th overall. The World Mountain Running Association held its under-18 Youth Cup in Italy over the weekend. The U.S. sent a girls and boys team mostly comprised of athletes from Colorado, one from New Mexico, to take on the 4.1 kilometer route with 200 meters of climb. The U.S. girls placed third as a team with Italy winning overall. On the boys' side, the U.S. placed fifth with France winning gold. Congrats to the teams comprised of Samantha Blair placing fifth, Madeline Burns going seventh, and Maggie Congdon 18th. Also to James Gregory fourth, Rafael Sanchez 15th, and William Ledden 21st. There seems to be a lot of online discussion about clean sport these days. Seems many out there are frustrated that not enough is being done to protect the trail and ultra running world from doped up athletes winning and setting records in the sport. The comments sections of many an I Run Far article and weekly recap are filled with heated hot takes on what's being done, what isn't being done, etc. Viewpoints seem to range from lifetime bans for any infraction to those who think there should be room for rehabilitation once an athlete has served a suspension. One interesting situation recently surrounds Maude Mathis. She recently set new course records at both Sierra Zanal and Pikes Peak Marathon, which we've talked about on this show. Back in 2015, she had two positive tests for a fertility drug she was taking called clomiphene. It appears from her blog and speaking about the issue that she had no idea it was a banned substance and that her intention was to use it to increase her chances of having children which she did indeed succeed at. She's a mother of two now. Mod failed to file a TU. Mod failed to file for a TUE or therapeutic use exemption, which is essentially a doctor's note for any substance used for health reasons. The Swiss anti-doping agency, after looking into it, accepted her reason at the end of the day, but not without imposing over 1,800 euros in fines and testing fees, as well as canceling several of her results from that time period including team relay results. She definitely paid a price for the mistake back then. Seems to be those out there currently who are not willing to, ex to accept Mod's excuse and are calling for lifetime bans for that situation or think that there is much more devious intentions underlying the entire situation. There definitely could be, there may not be, but she never served an actual suspension from a governing body. Question is, should Maud wear essentially a scarlet letter of doping for her situation? I think it's a great thing to inform the public of her situation, but where do we draw the line? I Run Far now mentions it after every podium post and refuses to interview her. Is that the right approach? I'd be curious to hear your thoughts. Next week, I'll go more in depth on the courts program and Camille Heron's fight for out of competition testing standards in the sport. Stay tuned. Speaking of cheaters, this is a pretty shocking and amazing. It seems that thousands of cheaters at the Mexico City Marathon continues. We reported that over 5,000 were DQ'd from last year's race, with reports of massive course cutting just to get the coveted race medal, which spelled out Mexico over six years of the event. Well, it seems to have continued this year with a new Map of the City race medal series that has already produced some DQs. Just ridiculous. And with that, thanks for tuning in to episode 160 of Outhouse News. The show would not be possible without the continued support of our Patreon contributors who help out with the production of this show each and every week. Join the Patreon crew at the link below for as little as $2 per month. Huge shout out to our $50 level supporters, Squirrels Nut Butter, Brian Sands, Base Medical Ultra Marathon Medical Care Online Course, Ultra Trail Blazers, Sean Trujillo, and the Twisted Fork Ultra out of Park City, as well as our $25 level supporters, Bluebird Running Company, Josh Goldstein, Carrie Savage, Renee Feint, Casey Carter, and Jeff Holbrook. Thanks for checking out the show, and we'll see you next time. If you have crazy stories to share or a question or feedback for the show, please leave a comment below. And finally, if you'd like to own this custom pair of Jam Jam's rainbow dog sunglasses, complete with a signed certificate of authenticity, check out the link in the description. Have a sh** week.